Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Food Travel Live Square. This is lucky show number 13, and as much as I always tell myself not to be superstitious, I am a little bit. I always feel a little better when the number 13 has passed by and just gone away, and that I'm okay. So I will tell you right now, we have a great show ahead. I am your host, by the way. My name is Andy Asher. So this week, we are going to take a peek into what the travel situation looks like this summer. I'm on a wing and a prayer. I really believe it's just kind of 50-50. Anyone traveling is taking a chance that they may not get to their destination. We'll add a few tips of our own for travelers. That'll be later on in the show. And we will take a dip in the Mimi's kitchen to see what's going on in there. This is gonna be just wonderful. It's so good. It looks awesome. It looks fabulous. And it smells. Anytime you can create exciting flavors with everyday vegetables, you know, I just think that it's a great achievement. And Mimi, she's the person to do it. More from her is coming right up. We do have a very interesting interview guest today. He wrote this book. It's about retirement your retirement dream or disaster uh, a fearsome sounding title like that gets my interest really fast but in my talk with author Rajiv Nagesh it changed my usual way of thinking about nursing homes it's like a paradigm shift he has some unsettling messages about retirement dreams or disasters like the book says and it can be a little bit scary well, Rajiv, I'm hearing nothing but doom here. I'm, I'm waiting for the silver lining. <laughs> so let me give you the silver lining. You can see it concerned me. Now, he points out things like I had never really considered, but he shares some hope, too. You know, I will talk to Rajiv about that. Well, All right. Now, landforms oh. were significantly changed. By this is show number 13 of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. It is all about productivity, positivity, and happiness for all of us over 55. Now, the show is new. It's powered by the Bloomer Boomer platform about all of those things. The show is growing and evolving. You know, food and travel, they are great topics. And we do keep it simple. Now, Live Square is also about live streamed on Tuesdays, and about live life authentically. One of the greatest pleasures of growing older, we aren't required so much to being someone that we aren't. We can live life authentically. And that's about productivity, positivity, and happiness as well. I hope all that resonates with you. Okay, now we know that uh, Mimi, she is busy in the kitchen. Let's check in. Hello, hello, hello. So today I'm gonna make my favorite dish, which is, I love this vegetable. It's called cauliflower. I love it, love it. So usually I roast it in the oven, but since I discovered the air fryer, that's what I'm gonna use today. So I prepared here lots of spices. You have turmeric, oregano, uh, garlic powder, smoked paprika, cumin, onion powder, mustard, uh, ground mustard, Aleppo pepper, which is a little bit heat. It's not too much. It's just wonderful. Some dried parsley, kosher salt, and black pepper. So before we start, we uh, put in the, the spices. I'm going to just put one and a half tablespoon of olive oil, or you can use avocado oil if you like. All right. So you put the oil first, you toss everything so the spices can stick to the cauliflower. There you go. Toss, 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 toss. And then you just go mix everything and pour it on top, like so. See that? Ooh, smells good. The cumin is always, it makes the trick. 
Here you go. So you toss everything like that. You can use your hands or a spoon. I'm not using a, my hands because the turmeric, you know, the, it will stain my little fingers. So, so that's why. <laughs> so you do like that. See that? It's, I put salt in there. So toss, toss. Now black pepper and it's ready to go in the air fryer so let me it's already warmed you know i we're at like 375 and we're gonna roast this for 15 minutes so i'll see you later it's simple and tasty we will check back with more in a little bit now summer travel is so close at hand travel planning is always a stressful time for me today let's see what kind of help that we can provide Here's what they're telling us on TV. As the busy summer travel season gets closer, the FAA is opening what it calls highways in the sky to speed up air travel. Travelers want to know if America's aviation system can keep up with demand from summer vacationers. I did some of my own research. There are a few things that people over 55 can do to plan for summer vacations. One, research destinations. Research various vacation destinations within the country or abroad to find that what suits your interests and budget. Number two, book flights and accommodations. Once you've decided on a destination, book your flights and accommodations in advance to save money and assure availability. Three, consider travel insurance. As you get older, it becomes more important to have travel insurance to cover any unexpected medical emergencies or trip cancellations. And number four, make necessary travel arrangements. If you require any special accommodations, such as wheelchair assistance or dietary needs, make sure to arrange for them with your travel provider. Number five, plan activities. Research and plan activities that you would like to do while on vacation. This will help you to make the most of your time and ensure that you have a memorable trip. We will try to stay on top of summer travel all summer long. Now, today's guest, he wrote this book. It's called Your Retirement Dream or Disaster. It's by Najif Nagesh. Now, I think the message here is really valuable, and I think what makes this message so impactful is it's coming from someone who was not born here, and he grew up accustomed to a different culture. The story begins with his reaction to the first time he visits a nursing home to see his father-in-law. And the first time that I went to the nursing home, I was shell-shocked. That would be a polite way of saying it. I walked away from that experience asking myself, how does the richest country in the world take care of their old aging people when these people can no longer care for themselves. After what you discovered, what have you done? What have you found out? So the good news and the bad news. The bad news that I discovered through this relentless amount of research is that what I thought was just a one-off, right? I mean, Bill happened, it's too bad it happened in his life. But when you start reading the research around this issue, it turns out 70% of Americans do not get to live out their last days in their own home. We will, we are destined, we are 70% doomed to take a last breath in a hospital, hospice house, nursing home, or place we don't want to be. Well, Rajiv, I'm hearing nothing but doom here. I'm, I'm waiting for the silver lining. <laughs> so let me give you the silver lining. The silver lining is, the silver lining resides with you and I, the consumer. Not with the government, not with the big businesses, because they have a way of doing business that does not comport to what we want. So the beginning of all of this is to be really clear about what do we want out of life, right? And what you will find is, and even just reflect on your own life, uh, Andy, you and I are both posting towards retirement pretty soon. What do we want in retirement? Well, we want to grow old, have the money to be able to have time to enjoy life. 
But does anyone, ask yourself this honestly, ask anyone, ask yourself this honestly, has anyone in the retirement continuum ever come to you and said, let me help you build a life where if you grow old and fall ill, you will not end up in a nursing home or become a burden on your loved ones? Well, the only way to assure that, correct me if I'm wrong, is to have a a, a big savings account. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's what the financial industry would like you to think. And yeah, right. I mean, they, they're right. I mean, if you have lots of money, clearly you should be able to take care of things, okay? All right, let's test that theory out a little bit. Do you know who Glenn Campbell is? Yes, the singer. Yeah, $15 million estate. The guy has dementia, he ends up in the nursing home, he dies in the nursing home. So $15 million is not enough, we need more. Okay, Tim Conway. $50 million. Dementia nursing home dies in the nursing home. Oh, so 50 million is not enough. All right. Casey Kasem, $80 million. Dementia gets dragged from California to die in a hospital in Gig Harbor, Washington. This crazy thinking that we have that all we need is money is just that. Well, I've been indoctrinated that way since the beginning uh, from when my parents were raising me. Right. And uh, I like what you hear. I, yeah. And I like what you're saying, I should say. Uh, and so uh, it's sort of uh, having forces me to kind of take a shift in thinking because yeah. uh, the only way I've ever known that you can survive uh, when you're aged is to have a lot of money in the bank. And that's what we've been brainwashed to think, right? If you really think about concepts, the the thing that I did was not being born in in America has a distinct advantage when it comes to looking at aging. Because I'm not thinking the same way, Andy, respectfully as you are, as most of the people who are born here. I'm looking at 1.4 billion people in India who can grow old with the same problems that we have in America and live out their life without worrying about building a nursing home or assisted living, a place that nobody wants to go to. How does that happen? So you're making, you're starting to make some logic here. Right. And so the book really is a great expose that the industries are only going to give you answers that make the industry money. Uh, How are we going to uh, change to live in the environment that you're projecting? So it must be your job to learn how to use the healthcare industry so that you don't fall ill longer. And here I'll give you just one example. The book has all sorts of examples of what we don't pay attention to. But here's one example. University of Minnesota, there's a guy called Dr. Chad Bull, research physician. He does a study around 568 people, all of these people over the age of 60, uh, all of the people over the age of 70. And every one of them was going to see a health decline in the short term, either cognitive or functional, something was going to give way. Divides the group into two groups. One group, he says, go see your regular doctors, your internal medicine and your family docs. And he writes a letter to them saying that we think your patient is a high risk of falling ill. Keep an eye on them. The other group says, go see this group of specialists called geriatricians. 18 months go by, he looks at the study, the, the results of the study. Here's what he finds out. People who were seeing geriatricians, 50% less depression, 40% less use of home care and home health, 33% less disabilities. Andy, let me let me spotlight the middle one again. 40% less use of home care and home health. What does life look like when you don't need home care and home health? You're nowhere close to being in a nursing home. That's what life looks like. How would the average consumer like to lower our risk of going to a nursing home by 40% without spending a penny more out of our pocket? And how much much education? uh, Properly, tell me what they did well with a geriatrician. What did, did that group do differently than the other group? They better understood the differences in the physiology of people under the age of 65, and some would say 70, compared to uh, the average internal medicine or the family medicine. So let me let me tell you what they did right was this. 
what does a pediatric doctor do different than an internal medicine doctor when they're taking care of children under the age of 18? Make sure they stay healthy, get the proper diet, exercise. But, but why doesn't a regular doctor do that, do that also? I mean, they're doctors, right? Absolutely. But the physiology of children is different than the rest of the population. Same way the physiology of older people is different than the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. Medications that are good for people at 25 and 30 and 40 and 50 may be the reason why you and I are showing signs of dementia at 70 and 80 and 90, routinely prescribed by traditional medicine, your internal medicine and family medicine. So it's not that they are coming from Mars or they have superior knowledge. They just are more focused on the differences in the physiological and the pathological needs of people who are over the age of 70, and they are more effective in keeping this population healthier longer. These are 40%. The, these are the geriatric. Folks. Geriatric doctors, right. Okay. And the question well, is... Here. You don't hear yeah. a lot of people going into geriatrics, it seems. I don't... Uh, you, you know, you, know, you go to your your primary care physician, and then they refer you to this other doctor. So I know it's a profession. I, In fact, my uh, my dad did it for a while. So uh, I don't hear about it as much, but it sounds like a good idea. It's a great idea. I mean, when you take a look at the stats that come out, Andy, this is unbelievable as to how many low-hanging fruit we have out there. But we never get educated about it because the medical industry has got very little incentive to keep people healthier longer. Wow. So it's up to you to put yourself in a situation. And the book does a great job of showing you dozens of different things you can end up doing in the healthcare to use your healthcare better so that you can stay healthier longer. Give, give me uh, maybe uh, one example, let's say, that uh, might I might do better uh, if I, that maybe I wouldn't have gotten that prescription from my primary care doctor over at the uh, hospital over here. I mean, you know, what, in other words, what would, let's say, the geri geriatric specialist tell you to do that maybe the primary care physician wouldn't? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, totally it does. I mean, what a geriatric doctor likely. Now, mind you, I'm not a physician. I'm yeah. a lawyer. So please, nobody should confuse this to be medical advice. But what a geriatric doctor is going to do is to take a look at where are you and what is around the bend because they understand the physiological changes that are going to happen based on your present condition. And they can then adapt to that and they can treat that a little bit better than an internal medicine or family medicine uh, physician work because they don't have that knowledge or the study course behind them to be able to make those predictions and connect the two and two together. Okay, that, so, that makes sense. Uh, and yeah. now that that's, it sounds like that's one element. We're, we're talking about a lot of different factors that right. work into all of this. Maybe we right. can, uh, what would be another one, another area we might want to jump into? So let's jump into housing then, you know, because the, the the book does a good job. It'll give you all sorts of ideas about how you can approach healthcare differently. And the key in healthcare is learn how to use your health insurance. Select the policy better. I mean, most people, they're thinking about insurance policies. It's all about money, you know, and, and today you hear about Medicare Advantage. What's the difference between traditional Medicare, Medicare Advantage, which is better for you? So there's a lot that goes into it, and the book does a good job of covering that. But then let's go to housing for a second. 70% of Americans will not be taking their last breath in their own home. Andy, if that is not a sobering fact, if that does not, uh, that does not compel people to do a 50 million person march on Washington, D.C. and say, what is wrong with us, the richest country in the world, where we are accepting of 70 percent of us being in a hospital, hospice house, nursing home, despite having done all the planning in life. Mm. And the reason why that happens is very fundamental. As a consumer population, think about what the average person's housing plan looks like. Oh, I want to live in my house as long as I can. And when the time comes, I can't. We'll figure something out. We got options. That's the planning, right? Now, look at life. What do you think life will look like when even you start thinking I shouldn't be living at home? Not the best day in your life. Why? You fell down, broke your hip. You had a stroke, you're paralyzed. You've got heart issues. You got cancer. You got dementia. Somebody takes you to the hospital. 
probably for the first time, what is going to, to, to invoke in you, you will start recognizing, oh my God, I'm about to lose everything about my life that I knew. Not only am I dealing with the worst day in my life, but now the system is telling me that I should go to a place that I don't know anyone. Everyone's going to tell me what to do. I have no control over my life. So the consumer, I think we need to start thinking of this problem a little differently. What a heart should be saying and is saying, I think, Andy, is not that I want to live here as long as I can. My heart is saying, I want to build that plan that will assure me that the day that I fall ill, the care will come to me. My family will not be my unwitting, unpaid caregivers in the process, which is what happens. And I will not go bo broke paying for this care because Medicare sure as heck is not going to cover any of this, this, this cost. Right. And that's a great question. And that's the hopeful part of the book. So the first part of the book is really the doom part that you were saying, because I just want people to be crystal clear why things go wrong. And the second part of the book is the beauty of the whole thing, that it, it gives you all the answers you're looking for. So let me just give you an example of in each industry. First, understand in life, retirement planning cannot simply be about having lots of money or having the right legal documents, having the right doctor or living in the right house. Life is multidisciplinary. You must take a look at health and housing and finance and legal and family as a continuum. Why? Because what we talked about, all your problems are usually going to start as a health issue, then they'll become a housing issue, then they'll become a financial issue, then they'll become a legal issue, and all along the way, they're a family affair. So now you take a look at healthcare. So what does healthcare in America look like? Well, healthcare in America in retirement is pretty simple. You turn 65, you enroll in Medicare by a supplement plan. That's what healthcare is. Now, what problem have we solved by enrolling in Medicare buying a supplement plan? We have access to healthcare if we fall ill. If I have a heart attack, stroke, cancer, I can go to the doctor, hospital, to pharma company, and I can save my life. Great. So what's wrong with that? Here's what's wrong with that. If your goal in life is, I don't want to end up in a nursing home against my wishes, Ask yourself this question. Who do you not find in a nursing home? Healthy people. That's right. mm -hmm. If you're buying the Kool-Aid that the healthcare industry is selling, you need an insurance policy so you can have access to healthcare. You've just done that as bought Kool-Aid because that makes them money. The healthcare industry makes money by fixing you after you're ill, not by, by keeping you healthier longer. Whoa. Well, you packed in a lot of information <laughs> there. <laughs> I think that it, it some of it almost requires um, a, a, a really a change in thought because for so long as I started out saying here that I was indoctrinated with a certain process that you go through right. and you've done a good job in maybe breaking that uh, uh, rigid belief into something that can maybe be a more practical. Right. And, you know, it's interesting you say that because the day I started my PhD, I was at University of Washington sitting in a classroom with about seven or eight other PhD students sitting in there. And, and the professor, she happened to be married to a Greek uh, husband, also a professor. And she stopped me after the class and said, Rajiv, tell me something. How the heck are you going to change a paradigm in America? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. You know, and I, the only answer, I'd never thought about it that way. I said, you know, I don't care about changing anyone's paradigm. The only person I, I plan to help is the person sitting in front of me so I can educate them, show them there's a better way of doing it. It's up to them to decide whether this is for them or not. So your book uh, has, your, your book covers a lot of uh, what we're talking about today. Absolutely. It covers everything and a whole lot more. Well, Rajiv, uh, it's been a delight speaking to you and some very eye-opening points. Uh, and I, I appreciate uh, you doing that and I appreciate the time. I, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, Andy, certainly. So again, his book is available at all the regular places, uh, including Amazon. Again, it's called Your Retirement Dream or Disaster. And before we go, let's see how Mimi's cauliflower appetizer turned out. All right. 
Hello, we're back. So the cauliflower is done. I prepared a tomato sauce uh, to go with it. Next time I will uh, show you how I made it. So we're gonna, hmm, hot and spicy. So we put the tomato sauce in the bottom of the, right here. Oh, I need, I need something to wipe that. Okay. You put all this tomato sauce like this. All right. And then you take your cauliflower and you put it on top of the nice sauce that you just, yeah, like this. Ooh, it smells so good. Okay. You know what? I love, love this, uh, this uh, air fryer. <laughs> All right. You can put as much as you want or whatever you're eating. This is the whole head. Uh, uh, actually, it's not like a, a big head of cauliflower. It was just a, a, a small one, which is enough. There you go. All right. Put this away. I need to clean this because it's splashed and I don't like it. All right. So can you see all uh, the cauliflower in there? And then, of course, for the, you know, the, how do you call that? You to, 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 uh, you see, sometimes I forget my words. <laughs> for the garnish, oh my goodness. To garnish this, I diced some red onions and parsley, chopped some parsley and some uh, lemon zest, of course. And you just put all this on top. All right. Oh my goodness. Isn't that cute and nice? And then you have to have a lemon with it. You have to squeeze it. So I'm not gonna squeeze it now, but you can. There you go. Voila. I hope you're gonna love this dish. It is delicious. Voila, voila. Very simple, very healthy, and very fast. See you later. Thank you so much, Beanie. We will see you next time. Hey, you know, we got through the unlucky number 13 and everything just seems fine, all right? <laughs> and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. Now, if you enjoyed this episode or you learned something new, I want to tell you three ways that you can support the show and keep Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared going. And number one, just get yourself subscribed. Now, every week, I am bringing on the, uh, the influencers and the people who can teach us something or have something interesting to share. So take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And number two, now this is really the ultimate way to support Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared, and it takes less than a minute. Uh, you can write something short and sweet, like, you know, I love the show. It's changed your life or something you learned from it. You know, I am not exaggerating that I read reviews every single day and every single one, whether short or long, it really means everything to me. And the more reviews means the higher we rank on all those algorithms, which means bigger guests. So take a minute, leave a review. And three, you know, share the show with your friends. Just hit that, that share button. I am eternally grateful Thank you so much for supporting the show, and I will see you again next Tuesday for another episode of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. <laughs>